Okay, so this time you guys sent in some research about something I think we can all relate to, and that's walking, right? Like we all do it to some degree or another. Yeah. Um, but this research is looking at how just those everyday steps, those daily steps, can really impact our health in some pretty cool ways. So yeah. we're going to be looking specifically at blood pressure and even mortality, like how long we live. Big stuff. You know, straightforward, need to know, takeaways. Actionable stuff. Exactly. The stuff that you can actually do something with. Yeah, so we've got two main pieces of research to dig into today that you flagged for us. And I do. The first one is a really big review of studies. It's called the Cochrane Systematic Review. It's kind of the gold standard for this type of research. Yeah, those are the heavy hitters when it comes to research. Yeah, it was led by Lee and a bunch of other researchers back in 2021, and they basically pulled together data from a whopping 73 different studies. Wow to look at how walking affects our blood pressure and our heart rate. And we're talking over 6,000 people from all over the world were included in this analysis. Global. Yeah, global. So this is some pretty robust stuff. Yeah. And then the second piece that you pointed us to is an original study. This one's from 2019, also by Lee and his colleagues. Same crew. Same crew, interesting. Yeah. And this time they focus on almost 17,000 older women. Okay. The average age was around 72 years old. All right. And they basically track their daily steps and then looked at how that connected to their risk of dying over about a four-year period. So they were looking at mortality. Mortality, exactly. So, yeah. So our mission, as we see it, is to take all of that research and really distill it down to the most important findings for you guys. What did all those studies tell us about the link between walking and blood pressure? Because I think this is something a lot of people are curious about. You know, are there natural ways to help manage blood pressure? Sure. What did they find? Well, the, the big takeaway, the main message is encouraging you know walking is good for blood pressure basically good compared to just doing nothing walking significantly lowered both systolic blood pressure that's the top number uh -huh. and diastolic blood pressure the bottom number in adults okay and this was true whether people already had high blood pressure or not oh interesting so you know across the board there on average people saw their systolic blood pressure go down about four points okay and their diastolic blood pressure drop almost two points that's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Just from walking. Just from walking. I like it. So in this case, the evidence for that four-point drop in systolic blood pressure was considered to be moderate certainty, which is pretty good. Okay. You know, we can be reasonably confident in that number. Yeah. So did they find any differences in, like, who benefits the most from walking when it comes to blood pressure? Like, did they break it down by age or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah, they did. They actually did some really interesting breakdowns. Okay, cool. So they looked at age and they found that walking lowered both types of blood pressure across all the different age groups they looked at. Wow. So they looked at people under 40, uh -huh. people between 41 and 60, Okay. and people over 60. All right. So that's great news, right? <laughs> that is great news. It's not just like, oh, this is for old people or this is for young people. Right, right. Everyone benefits. Exactly. And just to give you an example, in the under 40 crowd, their systolic blood pressure dropped on average by about 4.4 points. Okay. Which is pretty similar to the other age groups. So consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool. What about men versus women? Was there any difference there? Here's where it gets really interesting. Oh, I love the really interesting part. The analysis suggested that women might actually see a slightly bigger drop in systolic blood pressure from walking compared to men. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, so the average reduction for women was about 5.6 points. Okay. While for men, it was closer to 4.6 points. So still a reduction. Still a reduction. For both. For both, but that difference is worth noting. Yeah. What are we talking about here? Like, how much walking should they be aiming for based on this research? That's the million-dollar question, right? So the commentary on this review pointed out that when they looked specifically at the studies that showed the biggest impact on lowering systolic blood pressure, the average amount of walking was about 150 minutes per week. Okay. So that often breaks down to three to five sessions, each lasting between 20 and 40 minutes. Okay. At what they call moderate intensity. Moderate intensity. So what does that even mean? Yeah. It's like, what is moderate intensity? So basically think of it as walking at a pace where you can definitely feel your heart rate going up a bit. Okay. You can still hold a conversation, uh -huh. but you probably couldn't belt out a song. Right. You know? Right. They even suggested that this might roughly translate to about 100 steps per minute. Okay. So not just like, you know, scrolling along, but not a full out run. Right. Know? Like somewhere in between. Yeah. That sweet spot. Okay, and the review also looked at heart rate, right? Like, what did they find there? Yep, they did. They found that walking significantly reduced 
re resting heart rate by an average of about 2.7 beats per minute. So that's a really important consideration. You know, walking doesn't really have those potential downsides. Okay, let's shift gears now and talk about that second study. All right, let's do it. The one that looked at walking and mortality in older women. Okay. What were the key things they discovered there? So the really striking finding from the study was the strong link between taking more steps each day and having a lower risk of dying from any cause wow. in these older women. And they followed over 16,000 women for several years, which is a good sample size. Huge sample size. And they used wearable devices to track the steps. Oh, okay. So it was pretty accurate then. Yeah. So they got objective measurements of those daily step counts. So what kind of step counts were they seeing and how did that affect the women's risk of dying. Okay, so they divided the women into four groups based on their average daily step count. Okay. And the women in the lowest group averaged about 2,700 steps a day. Okay. Now get this, the women in the next group up who averaged about 4,400 steps per day okay. had a 41% lower risk of dying. What? Compared to that least active group. That's huge. That's a big difference. That's massive. For a relatively modest increase in activity. That's really incredible. Yeah. It makes you think you don't have to be, you know, marathon runner right. to see benefits. Right. Just moving a bit more makes a big difference. Yeah, that's a great point. You don't have to be an Olympian. No. To reap these benefits. That's really cool. And did that trend continue? Like as the women took more steps, did they see even more benefit? Yeah. So as the step counts increased, the women generally had a lower risk of mortality. Okay. But the researchers noticed that the benefit kind of leveled off okay. at around 7,500 steps per day. Interesting. So going beyond that didn't seem to provide much additional protection. So it's not necessarily a more is always better situation. Right. It's not a linear relationship. Right. The, the more you do, the better off you are. Right, right. They described it as an L-shaped curve. Okay. So you see a big drop in risk when you go from those very low step counts to that moderate level, and then it flattens out at the higher step counts. Gotcha. Like you get the biggest bang for your buck in that initial increase in activity. I like that, the biggest bang for your buck. So they also looked at how fast the women were walking, right? Well, they did. So did the intensity of their steps play a role in how long they lived? So initially they did see a link between higher intensity walking and a lower risk of death, but here's the key. Okay. Once they factored in the total number of steps, the women were taking that link with intensity kind of weakened. Interesting. And it mostly became statistically insignificant. Wow. So this suggests that for these older women, the total volume of steps okay. that they accumulated throughout the day seemed to be more important than how fast they were taking those steps. So really, it's just about getting out there and moving. Yeah, moving those feet. doesn't matter if you're power walking or taking it easy. Exactly. Just get those steps in. Yeah, accumulate those steps. It's worth noting that the average step count for all the women in the study was about 5,500 steps per day. Okay. How you can find little opportunities to walk more throughout your day. Yes, little tweaks. Exactly. It doesn't have to be this huge overnight change. No baby steps. Baby steps, right? So could you park a little farther away from the store and walk? Yeah. Could you take the stairs instead of the elevator? More steps. More steps, right. Could you go for a walk at lunch, even just a short one? Exactly. What questions do you have about this simple yet powerful act of walking. Yeah, keep those questions coming. Until next time, keep on walking. And keep on stepping.